नमस्कार जय श्री कृष्ण इल्यूमिनेटिंग टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑफ चैप्टर नाइन द पासिंग अवे ऑफ भीष्म देव इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण ऑफ फर्स्ट एंड ऑपरेशन ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी सेवन दान धर्मान राज धर्मान मोक्ष धर्मान विभागशह स्त्री धर्मान भगवत धर्मान समास व्यास योगत ही देन एक्सप्लेन बाय डिविजन्स एक्ट्स ऑफ चैरिटी द प्रैगमेटिक एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ किंग and activities for salvation then he described the duties of women and devotees both briefly and extensively to give charity is one of the householder's main functions and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard earned money a brahmachari or student should perform sacrifices a householder should give charity and a person in the retired life or in the renounced order should practice penances and austerities those are the general functions of all the ashramas or orders of life on the path of self realization in the brahmachari life the training is sufficiently imparted so that one may understand that the world as property belongs to the supreme lord the personality of godhead no one therefore can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world therefore in the life of a householder which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment one must give in charity for the service of the lord every one's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the lord therefore the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the lord in the shape of transcendental loving service for him as the rivers draw water from the sea through the clouds and again go down to the sea similarly our energy is borrowed from the supreme source the lord's energy and it must return to the lord that is the perfection of our energy the lord therefore in the bhagavad gita 9.27 says that whatever we do whatever we undergo as penance whatever we sacrifice whatever we eat and whatever we give in charity must be offered to him the lord that is the way of utilizing our borrowed energy when our energy is utilized in that way our energy is purified from the contamination of material inabilities and thus we become fit for our original natural life of service to the lord raj dharma is a great science unlike modern diplomacy for political supremacy the kings were trained systematically to become munificent and not merely be tax collectors they were trained to perform different sacrifices only for the prosperity of the subjects to lead the prajas to the attainment of salvation was a great duty of the king the father the spiritual master and the king are not to become irresponsible in the matter of leading their subjects to the path of ultimate liberation from birth death diseases and old age when these primary duties are properly discharged there is no need of government of the people by the people in modern days the people in general occupy the administration by the strength of manipulated votes but they are never trained in the primary duties of the king and that is also not possible for everyone under the circumstances the untrained administrators play havoc to make the subjects happy in all respects on the other hand these untrained administrators gradually become rogues and thieves and increase the taxation to finance a top heavy administration that is useless for all purposes actually the qualified brahmanas are meant to give direction to the kings for proper administration in terms of the scriptures like the manu samhita and the dharma shastras of parashara a typical king is the ideal of the people in general and if the king is pious religious chivalrous and munificent the citizens generally follow him such a king is not a lazy sensuous person living at the cost of the subjects but alert always to kill thieves and dacoits the pious kings were not merciful to thieves and dacoits in the name of nonsensical ahimsa non violence the thieves and dacoits were punished in an exemplary way so that in the future no one would dare commit such nuisances in an organized form such thieves and dacoits were never meant for administration as they are now the taxation law was simple there was no force no encroachment the king had a right to claim one fourth of the production made by the subject the king had a right to claim a fourth of once allotted wealth one would never grudge parting with it because due to the pious king and religious harmony 
there was enough natural wealth namely grains fruits flowers silk cotton milk jewels minerals etc and therefore no one was materially unhappy the citizens were rich in agriculture and animal husbandry and therefore they had enough grains fruits and milk without any artificial needs of soaps and toilets cinemas and bars the king had to see that the reserved energy of humanity was properly utilized human energy is meant not exactly for fulfilling animal propensities but for self realization the whole government was specifically designed to fulfill this particular purpose as such the king had to select properly the cabinet ministers but not on the strength of voting background the ministers the military commanders and even the ordinary soldiers were all selected by personal qualification and the king had to supervise them properly before they were appointed to their respective posts the king was especially vigilant to see that the tapasvis or persons who sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge were never disregarded the king knew well that the supreme personality of god had never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees such tapasvis were trusted leaders even of the rogues and thieves who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis the king would give special protection to illiterate the helpless and widows of the state defense measures were arranged previous to any attack by the enemies the taxing process was easy and it was not meant for squandering but was for strengthening the reserve fund the soldiers were recruited from all parts of the world and they were trained for special duties as far as salvation is concerned one has to conquer the principles of lust anger unlawful desires avarice and bewilderment to get freedom from anger one should learn how to forgive to be free from unlawful desires one should not make plans by spiritual culture one is able to conquer sleep by tolerance only can one conquer desires and avarice disturbances from various diseases can be avoided by regulated diets by self control one can be free from false hopes and money can be saved by avoiding undesirable association by practice of yoga one can control hunger and worldliness can be avoided by culturing the knowledge of impermanence dizziness can be conquered by rising up and false arguments can be conquered by factual ascertainment talkativeness can be avoided by gravity and silence and by prowess one can avoid fearfulness perfect knowledge can be obtained by self cultivation one must be free from lust avarice anger dreaming etc to actually attain the path of salvation as far as the women class are concerned they are accepted as a power of inspiration for men as such women are more powerful than men mighty julius caesar was controlled by a cleopatra such powerful women are controlled by shyness therefore shyness is important for women once this control valve is loosened women can create havoc in society by adultery adultery means production of unwanted children known as varana sankara who disturb the world the last item taught by bhishma dev was the process of pleasing the lord we are all eternal servants of the lord and when we forget this essential part of our nature we are put into material conditions of life the simple process of pleasing the lord for the householders especially is to install the deity of the lord at home by concentrating on the deity one may progressively go on with the daily routine work worshiping the deity at home serving the devotee hearing the shrimad bhagavatam residing in a holy place and chanting the holy name of the lord are all inexpensive items by which one can please the supreme lord shri krishna thus the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren hare krishna